Greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. My name is Pastor Abe Jeter. Welcome to Fully Alive. Fully Alive is an outreach ministry of the Church of God of Cleveland, located at 11100 Union Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, praise our God. Amen. Well, uh, today... Praise our God. Uh, we are studying Luke, amen, chapter 10. And uh, a few weeks ago, um, as we studied Luke chapter 10, we found that Jesus sent out the 70, amen. And uh, we looked at that and talked about uh what requirements he put on them, what instructions he gave, amen? And then, of course, we continued to study, and we found out at some point Jesus began to pronounce woes on unrepented cities, okay? Um, and, uh, of course, then last uh, time we studied Luke chapter 10, um, we see that the 70 returns rejoicing, okay? He sent those 70 out, gave them instruction, and then later on in the chapter, they come back rejoicing that even devils are subject to us in thy name. And we looked at that and brought out several points. Uh, today, um, our focus, amen, will be on uh, Jesus rejoices and praises God for revealing his truth to babes. And, uh, and then we're going to go into the Good Samaritan, uh, Samaritan, the Good Samaritan. Well, praise our God. Okay, so we're going to start with Luke chapter 10, verse 21. Luke chapter 10, verse 21. Amen. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. And said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. Amen. Jesus rejoiced in spirit. In his human so, one commentator said, some translations render, in the Holy Spirit, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. Well, praise our God. Well, why did he rejoice? Well, he was rejoicing in his Father's will, according to scriptures here. God the Father had chosen to reveal his heart, his plan that was in his heart from the foundation of the world. He had decided to reveal it to babes and the foolish. He has chosen to reveal revelation knowledge to babes or to those considered by the religious elite not very wise or even worthy of God. He has hidden his truth, revelation truth, from those who saw themselves as wise and prudent from this world's standard. Okay? <laughs> well, praise God. So, so you can begin to understand how, why the Apostle Paul uh, wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 23 through 29, he says to the believers, he says, <coughs> <coughs> wow, excuse me. Woo. <coughs> excuse me. But the Apostle Paul wrote in, in, in Corinthians, beginning at verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness, 
but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Well, praise our God in particular, in particular verse uh, 26, for you see your calling, brother, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, nor mighty, nor many noble are called. Well, <laughs> praise our God. Amen. And so Jesus was rejoicing that at the Father has, had chosen to re reveal his truth to babes and not to the wise and prudent because it so seemed good to the Father. Well, praise God. And then Jesus goes on in verse 22 and says, All things are delivered to me of my Father. And no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father. And who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom the Son will reveal him. Powerful words there. All things are delivered to me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son who the Son is but the Father. And who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom the Son will reveal him. And, it, and so he said that no one can ever come to a true revelation uh, of or, 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 or heart knowledge of who Jesus is or who God is unless it is revealed to them. I'm going to repeat, no one, no matter how smart you are, what your IQ uh, is, listen, no one can come to a true revelation or heart knowledge of who Jesus is or who God is is unless it is revealed to them. Amen. Truth must be revealed. So, listen. Only Jesus can reveal who the Father is. Amen. Only Jesus can reveal who the Father is. Only the Father can reveal who the Son is. Revelation knowledge. Praise God. Amen. And that's why I believe in revelation faith. Faith in the revelation that God has revealed to your spirit through the word of God. Well, praise our God. Amen. Now you can begin to understand uh, Matthew 28, 18, Jesus says, uh, he says, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. See, and that's what he says in Luke 20, 10, 22, all things are delivered to me of my father. But amen, in Matthew uh, 28, 18, Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And then he gave us this ministry of reconciliation, the Great Commission. He says, verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And so uh, he has committed to us this ministry of reconciliation. Amen. It is Jesus' will, it's the Father's will, to reveal this truth to the babes and to, amen, uh, the unwise, amen, the lowly, amen, and the wise and the prudent, they're uh, so far above, they think they don't need this, okay? Or they think, uh, <laughs> you know, and they got it together. But nevertheless, amen, praise God, we thank God uh, that he has chosen to reveal his truth to the simple-minded. I'm glad that God revealed his truth to me. Who am I? Yeah. Well, praise God. Amen. 
We thank God for this ministry of reconciliation that he's committed to us. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 uh, through 21, and says, All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given to us a ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their transgressions, their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath, he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so we thank God that uh, he has chosen to reveal these deep truths, that which was in his heart before the foundation of the world, to the babes and the foolish. Amen. Well, praise our God. Amen. And so after saying all this, uh, Jesus then turns to his disciples and he makes this profound statement. And he turned unto his disciples and he said privately, blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. Amen. Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them and to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. Mine, 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 mine. And that applies to you and I. Yeah. May God help us to appreciate, to value the things that are God's. Listen, listen, listen. The things that he has revealed to us. Amen. May God help us to appreciate uh, what God has revealed to us, his, his heart. Listen. So Jesus says to the disciples, blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you, many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them and to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. Well, praise our God. Listen, uh, uh, I want you to uh, listen to what Peter uh, says in, in 1 Peter, amen. In 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 10, listen to what Peter says here. He was talking about this great salvation he had, you know, you know, talking about in terms of how shall we escape if we neglect this great salvation? Again, uh, trying to emphasize uh, what God has allowed us to come into. And uh, uh, we need to be excited about what we have. But so many believers, they're like, oh, you're not excited about the things of God at all. And some of them are turning away, going to foolishness. Uh, like Israel of old, amen. The people of God had divine revelations and they were turned to idols like crazy. Amazing. Listen. First Peter 1 Peter 1.10, of which salvations the prophets have inquired. Now, now don't you see this? Because Jesus blesses your eyes. Look, and, and, and Peter says, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come on you. Listen, and when this prophet's got the word and and talking about what God's going to do in Christ, they want to know when it's going to happen. Lord, to, uh, 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 when are we entering into this? Listen, verse 10, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you and me, searching what, of what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Verse 12, unto whom it was revealed that, that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desired to look into. Praise our God. Praise our God. 
Amen. Praise our God. All right. Praise our God. So what a word is that? What a word is that? What a word is that? Well, blessed are your eyes, which see the things that you see. For I tell you, many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. Praise our God. Amen. Well, we thank God for his goodness. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. So we thank God for his goodness. Amen. We appreciate uh, the heart, the passion of Almighty God and what he has chosen, amen, uh, to allow us to enter into and to enjoy. All right. Well, praise our God. And then he goes on then in uh, verse 25, and he goes into the parable of the good Samaritan. Amen. And uh, we're just going to be touching on this and probably picking back on this next week. But but so, uh, verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And so tempted him. This lawyer uh, motivation wasn't 100%. But it appears that this lawyer, uh, you know, had some um, good intentions in his heart, but it wasn't 100%, you know, because it it seems that others have put him up to try to stumble Jesus, okay? So, yeah, he had some issues. But now, one thing about Jesus, he always cut through the quick and go right to the heart of the matter because he knows what's in your heart. And he goes, and now you're the woman at the well. You know, go get your husband. I should go up right there because he knew what her issues was. Uh, um, you're going to find he's going to go right to the heart on this man, the rich young ruler. You know, you know what, what do I need to do uh, for, uh, you know, inherit eternal life for him? enter into the kingdom or whatever, you know, but Jesus again went right to the quick on the rich young ruler. Ultimately, he said, go sell all the, yeah. He knew he, he had a hang up with, with riches, you know, and so, but he knew where this lawyer was as well. So anyway, uh, so behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, said, master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, the word lawyer is not, uh, does not mean one that practiced law as among us today, but one learned or skilled in the law of Moses, okay? Mark calls him one of the scribes. This means the same thing. The scribes were men of learning, particularly men skilled in the law of Moses. This lawyer had heard Jesus reasoning with the Sadducees and perceived that he had put them to silence. He was evidently supposed by the Pharisees to be better qualified to hold a debate with Jesus than the Sadducees. And they had therefore put him forward for that purpose. Reading from Albert Barnes' Notes of the Bible. Okay? So, but it was an interesting question that the lawyer asked him, what must I do to inherit eternal life. And uh, so I first, when I looked at that, I said, man, that's an oxymoron, but an oxymoron is a term for a figure of speech. It is made up of two or more words that seem to be opposite to each other or actually are opposite. Okay. Uh, for example, the words wise fool, you know, or warm freeze and so forth. But, you know, but and I suppose this may not be an oxymoron, but nevertheless, uh, you know, uh, what must I do implies works. Now, I mentioned the, <clears throat> the rich young ruler in Matthew 9, 19, 16, because his question was, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? What good thing that 
must I do that I may have eternal life? And this lawyer is asking, amen, uh, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, so, so uh, what must I do implies works or earning. Uh, to inherit implies, on the other hand, a gift or a blessing uh, to become an heir. This lawyer lived under the Mosaic law, a system of works, and so he would naturally think in terms of what must I do to earn, or the rich young ruler, what good thing must I do to, you know, enter into uh, that I may have eternal life. Now, but since Jesus, the light of the world, has come, we understand that we can't really do anything to earn eternal life <laughs> in and of ourselves. Now, that's a balance here, okay, because there's two major schools of thought. There is the Calvinistic school of thought that God had preordained a certain few to be saved and the grace of God is irresistible to them. They can't help themselves. They must be saved and that man is totally, totally, totally lost and therefore, amen, uh, hopeless and uh, and God have to do it all for him. But the, 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 the other school of thought would be the uh, Wesleyan holiness or Arminianism, but the, the thing is, uh, uh, you know, obviously they, they both talk in terms of repent, believe, receive the gift of God, but but uh, in the Wesleyan holiness uh, thought, or school of thought, uh, we believe in uh, prevenient grace, okay? Amen? Uh, we believe that uh, God values to the will of man. It's, it is important that... Uh, uh, man can exercise his will. God wants man to exercise his will. God will work with man to exercise his will because uh, God values uh, his ability uh, to choose. But nevertheless, and so, uh, so obviously we have to repent, believe, and receive uh, the gift of God, Jesus, into our heart, okay? But we believe in a prevenient uh, grace. Prevenient grace is a phrase used to describe the grace given by God that precedes the act of a sinner exercising saving faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, you know, God uh, uh, supplies grace uh, for you to exercise your will, uh, to uh, make a conscious decision and receive Jesus Christ. God provides grace for you to repent, okay? Well, praise God. And... Uh, uh, under the Western holiness thought, we believe that uh, salvation is open to all, okay? Whereas under the Western thought, uh, salvation is for a few who are already preordained, who cannot resist the gospel, and can never fall away, regardless. Okay, now, but nevertheless, we believe, praise our God, uh, that uh, uh, in prevenient grace, that God gives you grace, uh, as the gospel is preached, uh, and even before, drawing you unto himself, okay? And he gives you the ability uh, to believe, uh, to repent, and receive. But like I said, no one in themselves, uh, of themselves, can in that sense, though, uh, come uh, to uh, do anything that can earn salvation, because salvation is based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. And as the song said, Jesus paid it all, okay? So praise our God uh, in Christ. That's the plan that God had before the foundation of the world in Christ, amen? That's God's heart. That's his plan. I don't believe uh, that he foreordained who would be in Christ, but he did foreordain what would happen if you are in Christ, amen? Uh, where is the... And one school of thought, the Calvinistic school of thought, would say uh, that God foreordained who would be in Christ, and and those few are already uh, He ordained that they would be saved. Okay, 
And we believe that uh, God uh, uh, did not preordain who would be in Christ, but he did preordain if you're in Christ, what would happen. So if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, okay? Uh, but we believe that all men, the gospel goes out to them, uh, provenient grace began to work with them and bring them to an understanding, and they can receive or reject, exercise their wills. Well, at that point, praise our God. And that's not throwing away the fact that uh, the Bible talks in terms that we're taken captive by the enemy. Amen. And that is why, uh, as the gospel goes forth, uh, God gives you grace and to understand, and God gives you grace to repent and to exercise your will. Amen. Praise our God. Anyway, nevertheless, amen. All right. We believe that uh, in Christ we become children of God, heirs of eternal life. Eternal life starts here and continues on throughout eternity. Praise our God. And so, uh, so the brother come to Jesus and said, uh, what must I do, amen, to inherit eternal life? And Jesus then, praise our God, responds uh, uh, to him by saying, uh, what said the law, okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, when the rich young ruler came in Matthew 19, he, he began to say, you know, obey the law. Uh, the guy says, which? <laughs> you know, these guys. Uh, so this brother, uh, he goes, uh, uh, Jesus says in verse 26, he said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. Praise God. What an answer. Uh, yeah, he was quoting from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And he was quoting from Leviticus uh, nineteen eighteen: Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Amen. So nevertheless, it was a great answer. And Jesus responded. Amen. Uh, let them know indeed it was a great answer. Praise our God. Amen. You can read more about uh, this whole uh, exchange in Matthew 22, uh, 34 through 40. And Mark 12, 28 through 34. But anyway, and uh, but let's just uh, break some of that down. i got about a minute and a half. Listen, all right. Uh, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. The meaning of this is thou shalt love him with all thy faculties or, or powers. Thou shalt love him supremely more than all other beings and things and uh, with all uh, uh, the odor possible. Uh, to love him with all the heart is to fix the affection supreme on him more strongly than anything else and to be willing to give up all that we hold dear at his command. Okay, I'm reading from the, amen, uh, uh, Albert Barnes, okay, notes on the Bible, amen. Uh, let's see, I'll give you one more. Uh, with all my soul, or with all thy life means to be willing to give up the life to him and to devote it all to his service and to live to him and be willing to die uh, at his command, okay? With all my mind, all thy mind, to submit the intellect uh, to his will, to love his law and gospel more than we do the decisions of our own mind, to be willing to submit all our faculties to his teaching and guidance and to devote to him all our intellectual attainments and all the results of our intellectual efforts. Amen. Uh, with all thy strength. Amen. Uh, with all the faculties of soul and body to labor and toil for his glory and to make that the great object of all our efforts. Praise God. And uh, those thoughts, as I said, was from Albert Barnes, Notes on the Bible. Praise God. Now, we're going to pick up uh, next week on the Good Samaritan. Well, God bless you and keep you. His face, shine his face upon you. Amen. God bless. Amen. We love you.